Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on small business owners who are getting the move on. And our guest this week, well, they're a dairy whose business is as bright as a western sky. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we chat with real business owners who have real success and learn from them about what works, what doesn't, and who want you to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Join us where you can learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Cal D. Jagger, the managing partner of Western Sky Dairies. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you. And for visitors who don't know who you are, who are you and what is it that you do? My name is Cal D. Jager. We uh, own and operate Western Sky over here along with other family members. Uh, we're one of the partners in this operation. Been here for in Kern County for approximately 20 years and it's working out great for us. The reason we're here talking with Cal this morning is because we've gotten a lot of requests for dairies and there's a lot of dairies here in Kern County and Tulare County and we'll get into how many dairies there are in a little bit but also there's been some questions that have come in on our social media feeds about different kinds of supply chains and how different businesses operate in those supply chains. And so we are here at Western Skies <laughs> Dairy and we are here on location. So you're hearing the birds in the background. You may hear a truck coming by to pick up a delivery or pick up some milk as it gets sent off to be processed. So there may be other sounds that you hear in the background, especially if you're listening to this on the podcast. Now, the first thing I wanted to ask you about is very briefly, tell us a little bit of the family story because your father-in-law was an immigrant from... From Holland. Holland. What brought him here? Opportunity. Okay. I mean, he always wanted to be a dairyman. I asked him that once, what uh, possessed you to become a dairyman? It's all I've ever wanted to do. Milk for my neighbor as a young man, probably 12, 15 years old. And he always wanted to do that. The opportunities in Holland, particularly post-war, were pretty limited. Right. And he did have relatives down in Southern California that were dairying at the time. So he saw an opportunity there. Came in the, I believe, the late 50s or mid 50s, he immigrated as a young man, 22 years old, and started working for a bunch of people, saved up some money, started his own small dairy in um, Bellflower. Bellflower, I believe. Okay. And which used to be Dairy Valley back then. Right. And as time wore on, uh, it got a little bit larger, moved to Chino. Uh, all the dairies were moving out of that old Dairy Valley and made a new Dairy Valley in Chino. Uh, expanded the operation and started uh, oh, probably 30 years there with dairying. And moved up here to Kern County, had some land already. Uh, and moved to the, the dairy up here in 2002, we started milking cows here. It took about a year and a half to build the dairy. We started building in 2000. And so we've been milking here for about 20 years. Now, one of the things about Kern County is Kern County farmers are noted for economies of scale. And your dairy definitely falls into that category. Roughly how many thousand gallons of milk does your dairy process mm, every day? Daily on gallons, 50,000 gallons. 50? thousand gallons thereabouts a day yes every day S the truck load is about 6300 gallons i believe and currently we're doing about eight truck loads a day so so 50,000 times seven it's a lot of milk <laughs> <laughs> but it gets processed in all kinds of stuff it's, you know people always associate you know they say milk it's all fluid milk which is actually not the biggest consumption product that we produce. Cheese is by far the biggest. Really? But then you have ice cream, sour cream, yogurt, all kinds of products. Ice milk? I, well, that's a little less milk, but yeah, there's milk in there, <laughs> absolutely. I'm just saying that because I don't like ice cream. I like, I like ice cream, so anyhow. Sure. 
And a big part of what you do is you do not sell your milk to the grocery store. No. And for visioneers who are unaware of how the supply chain works for a dairy, very briefly, give us the overview on how that works. We are members of a co-op, California Dairies Incorporated, mm -hmm. and it's a producer-owned co-op, uh, headquarters in Visalia. And they're the ones that basically handle the marketing and distribution of that. We produce the raw material here, uh, and as you said, it's uh, or about 50,000 gallons a day, so it's quite a bit. In any case, uh, they come and pick up and decide where, uh, which creamery these loads are going to go to. We service creameries all through the state, a lot in Southern California. Uh, grocery creameries, uh, some of them have their own uh, different products. We have some of our own creameries as well that produce powder and butter and other products as well. Um, but not, we don't, this entity here, Western Sky, we don't deal directly with the customers. Again, that's the, the co-op responsibility. Uh, as I said, it's a producer-run co-op, so producers uh, sit on the board and make the decisions in what direction we're going to go. And uh, works out pretty well for us. And for those who may not be familiar with what a co-op even is, they may be familiar with how corporations are put together. Co-ops are created by a group of members yes. and who have an equal say or a proportional say in how the business operations of that co-op operate and to whom they service and, and sell and, and promote their services, correct? Right. As I said, the board uh, consists of uh, 15 producers. And they're the ones, along with the staff at uh, California Dairies, determine the direction we're going to go and what expansions we're going to do and uh, all the other criteria that goes into running that outfit. Again, I said it's pretty big in that we have six or seven plants of our own mm -hmm. and they process a great deal of our milk. Right. But we, deal, uh, we deliver too a lot of our milk because we're so, uh, the proximity to Southern California, go to Southern California creameries. Right. Uh, and uh, so, it runs like a corporation, but again, it's at the behest of its members. Production-wise, the second biggest co-op in the country. Wow. And, but not that many members. The biggest co-op in the country has tens of thousands of members. Let me guess, in Wisconsin. Well, there's a lot of dairies there, but <laughs> this co-op, uh, that's Dairy Farmers of America, DFA. Right. And they have members all through the whole country. Right. Yeah. So that's, a, that's the largest production-wise co-op. Does the co-op also participate in contracts and negotiation of the price and sale of milk and, and that sort of thing? Absolutely, because we distribute our milk, some of it through our plants, but some of it goes directly to other plants too. Uh, Laprino's a big cheese manufacturer up north. Kraft takes a good deal of our price, and we're dealing with creameries in the Southland as well. And we are constantly negotiating, contra negotiating contracts with those entities. And one of the things we're going to talk about in, the, in segments two and possibly three is market fluctuations and also how do you work with the ebb and flows of the market, especially when you're in a commodities market like milk. But before we get into that, one of the things that is very important to Western Sky is sustainability because you want to be here for future generations. And go through and tell us a little bit about some of the projects and improvements that you're making here to the dairy for those future generations. Well, as you said, we're in it for the long haul. This is not something that you get into just for short term. It right. is a family operation. So we follow the footsteps of uh, my father-in-law and uh, hopefully our kids will have an opportunity here as well. Uh, so maintaining this as a viable operation and uh, a sustainable operation is very important to us. Uh, one of the projects we have a solar array there and we make a megawatt of electricity there. Uh, we put in a methane digester and that helps us with uh, producing energy, gas, uh, that's used for uh, transportation purposes and right. generating electricity. Uh, also the way we handle our uh, livestock uh, to do that in a sustainable manner and one that is uh, beneficial to them. Right. That's important to us. The, the better the cows are taken care of, the better they'll do for us. Right. And uh, being in the dairy business, livestock is what we do. Uh, our point is uh, how well we treat the cows. That's the primary source of income. Right. So it behooves us to do the best job we can for them and we do our best in that regard too. Our product, of course, milk gets tested. Every load gets tested for 
different things, bacteria and antibiotics and things like that. Uh, everything we grow, we do some farming here. Uh, the uh, tissue samples we have to do, water samples we have to do. Uh, so we have to abide by the, right. uh, the mandates that the state government puts on us. So we, uh, like I said, we do our best to make sure that this is a, continues to be a viable, sustainable operation. One of the other things I noticed in the tour before our conversation, virtually nothing goes to waste. No, a lot of recycling. We use, all the, use a lot of water on the dairy, right. uh, but that water is flushed into a lagoon area and that water is used to irrigate the crops. Uh, the manure is used for fertilizer and other purposes as well. Uh, so yeah, we try to recycle as much as we can and it's economically a good idea as well just makes plain good business sense. Yes, sir. And if visioners want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? My email is pretty straightforward, cal at Western Sky Dairy. And uh, phone number is 661-203-9570. Uh, and if visioners want to learn more about the California Dairies Co-op, where do they find them? That would be uh, California Dairies Incorporated, and that's uh, headquarters in Visalia. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they can find a website for that. That's not an issue. And when we come back, we're going to talk about volatile markets, because again, we're here at Western Sky Dairies, and it is a commodities. And if there's any market that is more volatile, it's the commodities market, which we'll talk more about when we come right back. 80 years. For 80 years, the Claru family has owned and operated Claru Tire by bringing families and businesses like yours the quality tires and brake service you would expect to keep your family and your business safe for thousands and thousands of miles at a time. Visit Claru Tire at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or give them a call at 661-324-6069 and discover the Claru Tire difference for your family and your business. 80 years. Call Claru Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at clarutire.com. That's C-L-E-R-O-U tire.com today. I'm here with Cal Jager, the managing partner of Western Skies Dairy, and our visioner question comes from Jen who asks, we are in an industry that is volatile by nature, but it seems to be becoming even more volatile with each passing year. What are you doing to keep your business stable in your crazy market? Well, I'll reinforce the fact that volatility has become more of an issue for us, particularly in the past 20 years or so. And we have to learn to do with it. We have no choice. Our lenders have told us that, that volatility is a fact of life. Right. We do have uh, margin protection programs that uh, help us to hedge our mm. uh, milk to a certain degree that we can take advantage of. Also, we try to hedge our inputs, and that's been a little difficult, uh, particularly lately. All our inputs are getting more and more expensive, whether it be labor or feed, which is our primary expense. It costs right. a lot to feed these cows. Right. So we can do some hedging in that regard, um, but also building projects that can produce a revenue stream. Uh, one example is what we talked about earlier with sustainability was our methane digester. Uh, there'd be a little bit of revenue coming off of that. Uh, we put in that solar array that helps us with electrical costs. Right. So we have to find efficiencies wherever we can. Uh, we can't stand still, so we have to look for opportunities to uh, control that volatility to a certain degree. But dealing with, I will say that too, uh, dealing with a commodity like ours, it's a perishable product, mm. which adds a certain amount of difficulty in uh, moving that sure. commodity. So, and For yeah. visioneers who may not be familiar with it, talk about the insurance program that you guys participate in for hedging your bets and how, and just in summary, how does that work? Well, for a certain cost, right. and that varies almost daily, that you can uh, guarantee yourself a certain price on a particular time frame for a certain amount of milk. Right. 
and uh, sometimes that cost is probably more than we want to spend. And in a rising market, which is what we're experiencing now with the milk, you don't want to uh, limit yourself too much. Right. Uh, but the pricing of milk in particular is, is very volatile. It'll go way up. And unfortunately, those times don't last as long as when it goes down again. Right. And to maintain profitability, it gets to be a challenge. So if you can use those tools, buy a little bit of insurance to cover uh, part of your milk. Right. And that helps out in the long run. When you're not here at the dairy, what do you do for fun? I like to ski. Ski? Snow ski. Okay. Water ski a little bit. All right. And, uh, and when enjoy you say skiing, you're talking about downhill, downhill not cross country. Down. No, not cross country. <laughs> I don't have the the wherewithal for that anymore. But downhill stuff, we enjoy doing that. Right. Uh, we've been all over the place with a group of guys and right. take my kids skiing. Unfortunately, my wife doesn't like cold weather, so she's not a skier. Oh. But in any case, that's a lot what we do. Hiking is uh, enjoyable too. Right. We do quite a bit of that. What have you learned from skiing that you've applied to your business? Ooh, that's a, a tough, not a tough question, but yeah, there is probably some parallels. You get yourself in a spot. Yeah. Yeah, I might be in my, over my head a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to learn how to manage that problem. It's okay. the same one today. I was thinking about that earlier. It's how you handle those challenges and expect the unexpected and how to deal with them. And right. that's kind of the same thing here because always something new will come up that you may not want to deal with, but you have to. When you go and ski, for example, I used to ski at Mammoth a lot, mm -hmm. at Mammoth Mountain, and you have many trails that we call them a boulevard because they're wide and you know you can literally put a thousand people down and, and not cross paths at all. And then you have the trails that are barely a person wide, and then you have trails that are not even on the map that you create your own. Which ones do you tend to prefer? We'll, uh, we'll hit the tough ones a little bit. <laughs> Just to say we did it. Sure. Like the moguls, you know, I'm of an age now, I don't need to work that hard anymore. Right. So we'll hit a lot of groomers, right. but occasionally we'll get out there and we'll hit some moguls ski through a few trees right. and again just to say we're still capable of doing it <laughs> and we do the younger folks my kids they're a little more adventurous right but uh, i don't uh then jump a little bit right get a jump once in a while <laughs> not very much but the knees can't take it anymore no no exactly you married into the family business. yes this operation that you have here is much larger than the operation was in Chino 20 years ago. Yes. There's a lot of business owners that are growing, they're going through growth, they're having growing pains. And this is something that you yourself experienced here with Western Sky. Talk about a little bit about some of those growing pains that you had to deal with and what stood out for you that, that you're still using and applying today. Well, managing a great deal of more cows, uh, livestock does take a certain amount of attention on a daily basis. Right. Uh, so training the personnel how to uh, handle all that is right. a kind of chore, and, and for ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously we had a lot of experience with livestock, having that dairy started back in the 60s. Uh, in any case, that was a, a part of the program, as well as managing the facility. Uh, there is uh, constantly something that needs repair or revision. Right. Um, so you have to have a uh, maintenance schedule that's probably a lot more intense than it was down south. Right. And improvement. Um, also, down south, the dairies were land-wise very small. Right. So you didn't do any farming, really. Right. That's been a challenge for us is how to handle the farming. We right. uh, ended up hiring a... Uh, a local farmer to do manage our farming uh, for us, right. but buying the equipment necessary for that uh, and learning a little bit of the, about that trade was uh, a learning experience for us. But one of the other things for you personally, your foreign language in school was Latin. I can't remember any of it. <laughs> Except the pluribus unum that you that you oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> What's on the coins? <laughs> maybe. On the, but not having a, a second language that is much more prevalent here was also a personal challenge for you. Well, we always have a segment of guys that speak English, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it's a little frustrating. I have to go get another guy to communicate what I'm saying for them to communicate to me. Right. But it's not too problematic. We have a herdsman. He basically 
uh, is in uh, charge of the care of the livestock. But he has a very good demeanor and he speaks English very well. And so he's our translator for a great deal of things. Um, so it is a challenge and sometimes it is a frustration. Right. Uh, we have times where I assume they understand what I'm telling them. They assume I understand what they're telling me <laughs> and it's not really the case. So we try to make sure that everybody is aware of what's uh, supposed to be happening and the procedures and the protocols. One of the challenges that a lot of business owners are dealing with right now are the labor shortage. And this has also impacted you as, as well here at the dairy, but you're seeing things change a little bit and the, the market's starting to open up. I think so. Uh, we did have a struggle there for a while. I mean, we always have a certain amount of turnover. People move on uh, to other opportunities or head back to the home country, whatever it might be. So uh, finding people for a while was really difficult, particularly during the pandemic. We didn't have a lot of uh, COVID impact here on the dairy itself. And as a standalone operation, we had, you would never know that there was COVID. Most right. everybody came to work every day. We had a few guys suffer from it, but they all came back to work. But during that time, it was very difficult to find help. So it was a little tough there from time to time. People get sick or COVID being an example, and we have to replace them or find a substitute for a time being. But now I would say in the last, oh, six, eight months, it seems that more people are available, getting ready to come back to work. Uh, we are pretty good. We don't have a great deal of turnover, but uh, we don't want to be overstaffed. So when we miss a guy, we need to find a replacement pretty quickly. And that has gotten considerably easier in the last six to eight months, I would think. What is the key to not having a large turnover? I would suspect, I mean, you know, people are here to make a wage. And with the new requirements that the state has mandated on us with a higher minimum wage and overtime, uh, they get paid fairly well for right. doing what they do. There's a lot of overtime involved. And this is not a nine to five where I can say we start milking now and we're done eight hours later. Uh, you work until the work is finished and that's agriculture and all right. agriculture. So that's changed a little bit. So their wages increased some. So that's a big part of it. Uh, but we like to think that we had mentioned it earlier, having mutual respect between us as managers and the employees. Uh, I tell the guys too, if you have a suggestion, if you have a problem, bring it forward. Some guys are very hesitant to do that, but uh, communication is very important. And I would like to think that we do a pretty good job with that. We have regular meetings, safety meetings, but it's always an operational meeting too. The respect part is very important to me. and. We try to treat the guys well and provide them with a good working uh, facility. Uh, but dealing with livestock is challenging because cows don't always cooperate. So it's you like do they have, have a mind of their own. They can. <laughs> they can, oh yeah. When we come back, we're going to talk about something that is very important as the employer to your employee. It's all about attitude. When we come, right back. The reason we're here with Cal D. Jager, the managing partner of Western Skies Dairy, is because of a visioneer question that came from a visioneer just like you. They wanted to find out, so how do I deal with a volatile market that's always going up and down and all around? Well, that's why we're here. So if you've got a visioneer question, a visioneer thought you'd like to learn about, just reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and send us a direct message. Let us know the questions, the thoughts, the ideas you have that you want to learn about here on Small Business Celebration. So reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Cal D. Jager, the managing partner of Western Skies Dairy, and our visioner question comes from visioner Brad who asks, we just bought our second business and in it is an employee that is very good overall, but has a, but we've always done it this way, attitude. We don't want to let that person go, but what can we do to help them change their attitude? Well, here we do some training. It's not particularly extensive mm -hmm. and we have issues with that too. Guys will come from other operations that uh, operate differently than we do it here. Right. 
Uh, this is the way, like you said, this is the way we've done it. Uh, I've always done it. Well, that's not following our protocol. What we like to do is tell the employees, this is the protocol, this is what we're going to do, how we're going to milk the cows, how we're going to feed the cows. But explain to them why we do it that way and what the benefits of that are. Uh, and have them understand why right. we're making these decisions. Well, they might think, uh, well, that seems like a lot of extra work or that's not the right way to do it. There is madness behind the method. Yes, right. absolutely. And on top of that, we like to get their input, you know, because like in the barn, those guys are there all day, sometimes eight, 10 hours a day. Right. And what they have to do, uh, they learn from that what's, what's going to make this work better. I right. mean, use their input to a certain degree, too. I mentioned our herdsman earlier. He's our eyes and ears out there a great deal. Who is and your he, herdsman, by the way? His name is Refugio Lopez. Okay. And Refugios, their nickname is Cuco. Cuco? Cuco. Okay. So everybody calls him Cuco. <laughs> and he has a good rapport with all the guys. He has a good rapport with us. And he'll often make suggestions coming from the guys. Uh, they'll come directly to us uh, on occasion as well. Uh, so that back and forth is important. Mm. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, that, that respect factor goes both ways as well. Right. We respect what they do. Uh, I mean, they're usually very timely. We don't have a lot of ab absenteeism or late, lateness. That's not a big issue for us. Uh, so we give respect for those guys being able to perform their jobs and we can't operate without them. But, it has to come in return too, that they respect what we're trying to do here too. Like we have a new operation or a new piece of equipment that we're trying to uh, incorporate into our business to make things work better. Right. Uh, we need their input. How's it working? Uh, sometimes they're not too enthusiastic about something new. <laughs> and, but again, it's a back and forth and then uh, communication is a key. In any relationship, sure. proper communication makes everything run smoother. I often ask my guests, what is their favorite book or what book are they reading right now? And more often than not, they answer back with a business book because it's a business show. But Cal is a fan of the classics. And your favorite book of all time is? Well, I'll say Les Miserables. I really like that by book. By? Victor Hugo. The great Victor Hugo. Yes. And why that particular book? I don't know, it was the give and take with good and bad, and okay. it was a little bit idealistic, you know, but, uh, and then the historical perspective too, about Napoleon and all that stuff, Right. and I enjoy history a great deal. Right. But that, you know, with the, the, he being a bad guy, and then he reforms himself and becomes this, you know, upstanding pillar of the community. But he also has his past constantly chasing yep. him throughout his entire life. His whole life. How is is that been a something that you have that you can relate to yourself? Not really. I mean, I searched for uh, I had a number of different jobs before we uh, I came onto the dairy. Right. So in that time, yeah, there was you know ups and downs there. Right. But once we settled into this uh, job, it's been pretty good. Well, we got married. Uh, I got married, and we had three kids. And, right. No, well, it's been a great experience. I can't say that uh, I've had any big regrets as far as that goes or have anybody chasing after me or anything like that <laughs> sure, like, Mr. Sure, like sure. Mr. Valjean right 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 but uh, no it's been very good now one of the things that you touched on a little bit in the previous segment is the volatility in the dairy industry mm -hmm. and one of the things that we were talking about off camera is expecting the unexpected and this is something that you've seen a lot of business owners struggle with but this is something that's very important why is it because it will happen mm. i mean whether it be like say the price of milk takes a big drop so you have to take steps to be able to handle that right or uh, you have a particular issue with the livestock uh, they're not performing as well or there's uh, maybe some illness going through the herd or something like that so you, you have to respond to that right uh, employee issues can be difficult uh, and those are things that you have to respond to and, and often those are the most unexpected something right. happens and uh, you have to attend to those so as I said before whether you make plans for it or not you should because it's going to happen Something's going to come up that's out of your wheelhouse. That's not something that you're particularly comfortable with. But you have to find a way to deal with it and make the most of it. That's why you buy commodity insurance. That helps. 
<laughs> we don't partake a great deal, but every little bit helps. Right. So, and, and as, as I said, particularly now on a rising market where milk prices are getting good, it's kind of hard to lock in a lower price, but right. it does afford you some security. Right. And security is important for us. Sure. What makes you wake up every morning and open your business? Well, primarily, we got to milk the cows. <laughs> <laughs> they the they cows do are need ready to go. Cows. They're ready to go to work, so I have to be ready to go to work too. Right. And so every morning we're out here. Our guys are out here every day, and uh, we got a reliable crew. Uh, but this operation takes a great deal of management, so we got to be out here and make sure everything's running smoothly. Right. And I will say that agriculture in general, but dairying in particular, it's a it's a cliche, and I'm not fond of cliches, as they say. It's not just a way of making a living; it's a way of life. Mm. Uh, and you do you get uh, kind of attached to uh, working with livestock. My kids all showed heifers at the fair, and we got pictures of them laying down with their cow in the bed, and eh, not their bed, but the bed at the fair. Sure, sure. In any case, so you do become I don't know. You want to say ingrained in this kind of lifestyle, right? So. So it's not a problem for me to, you know, that's probably an exaggeration. There are days <laughs> where I'm not real anxious to get out of bed. Right. But no, we enjoy what we do. Uh, it presents a lot of challenges, but uh, as I said, you got to handle those challenges and how you handle them is going to determine how successful you are. Well, Cal, this has been a real privilege. Thank you very much for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. It was my pleasure. Nice and to meet you guys. Thank you. And if visionaries want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, you can uh, email me. It's cal at uh, westernskydairy.com. And phone number would be 661-203-9570. What was that number again? 661-203-9570. And if you want to learn more information about California Dairies, Inc., the co-op, they can find it at... California Dairies, Incorporated, CDI. And they're based out of Visalia, and you can probably find their website on the internet. I don't think that'd be an issue. Sounds good. And I'll be right back with my final thought. 80 years. For 80 years, the Claru family has owned and operated Claru Tire by bringing families and businesses like yours the quality tires and brake service you would expect to keep your family and your business safe for thousands and thousands of miles at a time. Visit Claru Tire at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or give them a call at 661-324-6069 and discover the Claru Tire difference for your family and your business. 80 years. Call Claru Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at clarutire.com. That's C-L-E-R-O-U tire.com today. What is it actually worth? One of the things I really enjoyed about this conversation with Cal D. Jagger is that nothing goes to waste on that dairy. The water gets recycled and reused, the bio waste gets recycled and reused, and in fact even the sunshine gets purposed and used there on the dairy. And it got me to thinking, how many of us business owners don't spend enough time thinking about all the different things that we use on a regular basis or in an infrequent basis that really doesn't serve a purpose or maybe worse we have an emotional attachment to keeping it around after all at one point i did drive a 1973 datsun station wagon painted baby blue with the license plate baby one i haven't had that vehicle in a very long time but what about you what do you have in your business that you might be sticking around not because it has any real intrinsical value but maybe because it has more of an emotional value maybe that emotional value is a good thing but it's time to have that honest conversation what is it actually worth I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Cal D. Jager, the managing partner of Western Sky Dairy, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business, and we'll see you here again next week. 
By the way, where do boats go when they get sick? The, where do what go? Where, where do boats go when they get sick? I don't know, where do boats go when they get sick? To the dock. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you get a smile and start with some joke? Is that what it there is? There it is. There it is. You know the secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Small Business Celebrate. When you're ready. Okay. Did you Did you do that in the last Oh, I did not. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so we ha have a uh, <clears throat> cup of joe Let me to help sure you go. I can see it. I uh, <clears throat> Can you see it? Again. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Product placement. Product placement. You got it.